Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Happy, what day is it? Thursday. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We got Steven running the show for us today as well. It is our first mailbag show of the regular season, and we've got a ton to get to and not a ton of time to get to it. So we're going to, first of all, smash that like button for us on our YouTube page. Make sure you follow and subscribe to our YouTube page as well. Same deal with your favorite podcast app. Follow us. Subscribe, whatever it calls for, and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you ever want to get in touch with us, you can do it very easily on Twitter at chgo underscore Blackhawks, or you can email us, blackhawks at allchgo.com. And, of course, if you're a diehard, you can reach out via our members-only Discord, our diehards-only Discord, which is where we're going to start the mailbag today. Yeah. So let's fire that bad boy up. Bust open the sack. Hey, now. All right, first question from Alexander Faripas. Uh, does Kaiser development or confidence be impacted? If so, how much if he stays up all year? I'd rather have him here and play through the struggles. You guys had mentioned Rockford. By the way, Vlasic for Norris. <laughs> <laughs> well, It's your money. <laughs> the problem with the Kaiser thing is there's no – I mean, the alternative is, is Nikita Zaitsev. Um, you could argue Isaac Phillips, but he struggled really mightily. Of course, it was one game. It was an 8-1 loss, and everybody struggled mightily. Everyone was bad. Um, but I don't know. I, I I don't think Kaiser's had some real bad moments, but I don't think he's been consistently as bad as maybe it seems. Well, and we said before the season um, that – Having Wyatt Kaiser in the lineup, making mistakes and hopefully learning from them and having that be part of his development path would be better than a veteran like Nikita Zaitsev in there making the same mistakes, not learning from them and costing the team, you know, potential games and stuff like that. So I think it was pretty, to me, it seemed pretty evident that when uh, the Blackhawks needed a defenseman when Alex Vlasic went down, uh, they went to Isaac Phillips and put him in the lineup rather than going to Nikita Zaitsev again. I think that was pretty telling uh, that the plan is to play the young kids and Zaitsev will, will keep signing your checks as long as you're here. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm fine with Kaiser being in the lineup, making mistakes, and living with that as long as there is growth and development from that. And we know how much Luke Richardson loves – teachable moments and, and working with, you know, the defensemen, the young defensemen in those, in those moments, working through them through video sessions and stuff like they're doing uh, today. And I think that that can be good if there's no, like, if there's no spot for him, if there was no spot for him, playing in Rockford makes the most sense. Like yeah. last year with Vlasic, you could make the argument like, well, you had Jake McCabe for a while, you had Caleb Jones. Like it, you could have put him in the NHL, but you didn't have to. Whereas now it's kind of like, you know, you, you could put Kaiser in, in, in Rockford, but you could also have him playing those minutes here uh, in Chicago as well. So I don't think there's a wrong answer, but I think he might have more on-ice success playing in Rockford because of the, the change in competition level. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, there have been some struggles. There's been some good stuff too. It's it, It's not been a complete dumpster fire by any means necessary but uh you know what's more beneficial for his long-term development is it 13 14 minutes a night with Zaitsev or Tenorti against NHL bottom six competition most of the time or is it 20 22 minutes a night as the top pairing in Rockford playing on the power play getting some PK time in it might be option B yeah it certainly worked for Alex Vlasic yeah I'm not opposed to it. I, I just right now he's got to be here with Vlasic out. He's got to be here. But right. I I trust I trust Richardson and Davidson's judgment on guys. And if they think that 
it is becoming too much for Kaiser. I think he will. I, and I don't think he's here for all 82. There will be a stint where they send him down to kind of hit the reset button. And they probably want to give Phillips a little bit of a run here too. As the season goes on, maybe we see Del Mastro for a few. Maybe we see Allen for a few mm-hmm. if they're playing really well. So there's a lot of options. Yeah. Um, I we, think that there is the fear, and I've talked about this for years here, where it might look like a defenseman is held, holding their own, but underneath the surface they're really struggling, really floundering. This happens especially with defensemen. So I expect and I know – that this leadership's gr- leadership group is keeping their eye on the young players and making sure that that's not happening. And if it does, I'm confident they'll make the right play. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think there's. Like I said, I don't think there's a wrong answer. So I, I it's, it's kind of just comes down to um, how does you know where does he feel more comfortable? I, obviously, I think the the game checks are nicer in the NHL, um, but. You know, I, I, I think the meals are nicer. Yeah, yeah. The accommodations are, are nicer. Uh, no disrespect to the Olive Garden in Rockford. But, yeah, I, I just think, you know, if if he is more comfortable in those in those roles, in those tough minutes, um, and you, like I said, like you see the development path there, eventually those mistakes get corrected and, and, and he's not making them, um, I think that's fine. But it's as someone in the... Um, comments here uh neil before sad heard that before uh mentions duncan keith and duncan keith took two years of playing in you know in in the ahl before before coming before coming up to the nhl and having his own struggles early on in his career so you know defensemen take some time i know we would love for a 19 year old kevin korchinski and a 21 year old wyatt kaiser 22 21 these guys in their early 20s to be nhl ready right away but it it'll take some development this season is going to have tons of growing pains we've seen a lot already so that's just kind of be going to be the norm for this season all right what do we got next uh speaking of young defensemen we've got a question uh another question from our discord from big len for the mailbag we've always heard that the defensemen need more time to be nhl ready so give prospects until they are 23 (laughs) to 24 to make it but over the past few years more and more defensemen are coming into the nhl and being reasonably successful much earlier for example, Dowling, 18 first power, overall pick, first overall pick, 19, and, and now seventh Korchinski. Overall pick. Okay. Is there some reason uh, more defensemen are NHL ready at an earlier age? Those, those are exceptions to the rule. Those yeah. Are extraordinary. Those are all three players, players that were picked in the top 10. And those were also, when you look at Dowling and Power, those were players that were drafted by teams that also needed them right away. Like, yeah. there was no. You throw Korchinski in there too, probably. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and then you. you Listen, if the CHL rule wasn't a thing, Krzyzewski yeah. would probably be in Rockford learning the pro game yeah. down there. Mm-hmm. So, yes, ideally, 18, 19-year-old defensemen are not the norm. No. And just because we've seen – I mean, we're seeing a, 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 a more extraordinary players overall, not just defense, but guys like Hale McCarr. And, and, you know, we're talking about the young forwards that are coming up. This is like a golden era of new talent coming into the league. Yeah. It doesn't happen all, you know, all the time. And as Jason says in the the comments, Darlene, it took him a good two to three full seasons before he hit yeah, where you're like, oh, okay, now I see why they drafted him number one overall. He struggled too. Yeah, exactly. Just because he played in the NHL at 18 doesn't necessarily mean he was NHL already. Right. It was just he was the number one overall pick. You know, he wasn't under contract in Sweden. It just, hey, we have a spot for you. Get out there. Let's yeah. play. Yeah. Right. Um, so, and, and Power went back to college. Power, Power sp- year. played two years uh, at Michigan, one year after he was drafted yeah. first so overall. It's... Not something that normally happens, and usually it's it's like a set of circumstances that leads to those guys get in there, but most first round draft pick defensemen don't play in the NHL till they're at least twenty one, twenty two. Well, and you mentioned, but every player is different. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, completely. There's not there's not a a a, a factory where it says you know. Do not open until twenty till twenty <laughs> second birthday. Like every player is different. Some yeah. players are just better and mm-hmm. smarter and can handle the NHL at 18 than other players are. Yeah. Each player is different. Well, and you know, you look at guys like, uh, you know, the Hughes brothers, Quinn and Luke, like they, after they were drafted, went back and, and played in college and seasoned a little bit. And now they're, they're 
playing really well. Kale McCarr did the exact same thing. He was fourth overall pick in 2016. Two years he played in college before getting to the NHL. And I know, to me, it sometimes it feels like he's still 22 years old because I know he looks like a child yeah. still. But like he's he's ju uh, just turned 25. Like it still it, it it takes some time. So it's it's not a bad thing to. I'd ra I'd rather have a a, a defenseman be 23 years old, 24 years old, and be like, all right, they look like a solid NHL veteran now rather than being, you know, shaking my fist because a kid's 19 or 20 and is like, why isn't he an all-star yet? Like, there's yeah. there's a path Well, it's also, forward. you know, different types. So, you know, Duncan Keith, who was referenced in, in the thing, I mean, he was 50, 54th overall in the draft. Very small coming out of Michigan State. He needed to grow into his body mm -hmm. a little bit, too. But when you look at Korchinski and Kaiser, those are two more offensive-minded guys. And the offensive game is ready more quickly than the defensive game. Yeah, That's why I think when you look at, like, Del Mastro and Allen, they're getting more time to develop because they're they're going to be guys who are dependent on to be big, physical, stay-at-home type defensemen. Yeah. So maybe you don't want to rush a guy who is going to, if my one job is defense, to struggle on defense. Korchinski can struggle defensively and say, I still ended the game with two assists and feel pretty good about that. Right. Yeah, that's that's – a good point where most of these younger defensemen who are here earlier are more the offensive minded, mm -hmm. you know, the Quinn Hughes, now Luke Hughes, uh, Darlene definitely has got the yeah. offensive side of his game. So does power. Korchinski is an offensive minded defense. So you could deal with the uh, defensive lapses and breakdowns. If the guy's putting up 50, 60 points, right. right. Trade that off. There's very few stay at home defensive defensemen who, who play in the league at 19 or 20. Because mm -hmm. you could take time with that. Yes. Right. All right. Since we're mentioning Hughes's, uh, this one from Rooney in our Discord. Hughes. Hughes thoughts, I. thoughts on Jack Hughes, New Jersey, is it comparable to Bedard Hawk's growth plan? Anything you would take from their plan 2019 to present and copy or do differently? See you all Saturday. Sweet. I think we'll the path is very similar. Yeah. I mean, could we see a reality where it takes a year and a half before Connor Bedard looks like the guy that? We have all kind of expected him to be by, you know, the standards that were kind of set for him. Sure. And that's that's what happened with Jack Hughes. He was top yeah. overall pick. A lot of a lot of hype behind him. And it wasn't until basically end of two seasons ago last year where it was like, Oh, that's right, Jack Hughes, you're you're this player. Like yeah. that's that could also complete, completely be the, the case too with, with Bedard, because again, teenager in the NHL it's it's a rarity for for them to be instantly good you know instantly uh superstar level it's rare players can't do it but it's rare so yeah if it takes two seasons for Connor Bedard to reach that like all-star level uh player you know be the 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 driver of offense that a guy like Jack Hughes has become I'd, so be it. I'd like it to be quicker, but that's just sure. selfish. Well, I mean, look, Jack Hughes' rookie season, it took him six games to record a single point. It tw he has, uh, this season, in eight games, he has 18 points. Is his that good? His rookie season, in 61 games, he had 21. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it took, and, but also, let's look at that. The Devils kind of took the patient route as far as building around him as the Blackhawks are. I mean, you look at that roster his first season, and your leading scorer on that team was Kyle Palmieri with 45 points. Yeah, the Devils were bad. They were. Like, here's here, Taylor Hall was on that team. Oh, there's a preliminary there. <laughs> the, see? Have Taylor Hall. In the, that was in, the year <laughs> after his uh, after MVP, his, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, he, he, only, he only had 30 games on the team. Uh, but Kyle Palmieri and Nikita Gusev. Oof. I think he's in were, Russia. Those were your two <laughs> leading scorers on that team. Yeah. You had a young that was, Nico Hershier still coming into his own. That was also the year that they got Dougie Hamilton and he got hurt, if I remember I correctly. So. Yeah, yeah, you had Jasper Bratt before he figured it out. You know, Pavel Zaka, Blake Coleman. These are good names, but they weren't where they are now. Yeah. Like, it wasn't a very good team. You had P.K. Subban on that team, but that was the last hey, year. you know who played 18 games and had six points for that team? Mm. Our guy, Joey Anderson. 
Oh, oh nice. <laughs> there you go. So they kind of did the same thing that Kyle Day. Like, you could look at that, and the Devils were kind of like, we've got this talent that you also had Nico, Nico Hirscher the, the previous year. So you were starting to get your pieces together. Right. Like, let this, let this. They've f- wonderful. Ferment, you know, ferment and let, let, let's this happen organically. Or you could do what the Oilers did. When they got McDavid, they all managed like, well, we got to go out and completely change the program, and we got to get, we got to get veterans in here, and they're still waiting to figure it out up there. So, yeah, the 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 Hughes comp is a good one, you know, but I I think, I think Bedard's not going to take that long to hit that like elite superstar level. But if he, but if he does, like, I mean, the kid's still doing pretty damn good. Because he got right six, points six points in nine four games. Four goals, six points in yeah. nine games. I mean, that's, that's yeah. 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 And he had a goal taken away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. He's, he's off to he's a better doing, start he, than Hughes was. He's, he's, he's doing fine. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Jack Hughes had seven goals his entire rookie season. Yeah. I think, I and think we're going to get now he's, now he's going to win the Hart Trophy this year. Let's see. Hughes is. Yeah. Hughes did not lead. The Devils in scoring until last season. Until last season, when he had 99 points. Yeah. yeah. And now, according to our friends, at our, our new friends at the What Chaos uh, podcast, Pete and DJ, he's going to have 200 points this year. <laughs> sure. He's on Why pace. Not? He's on pace. All right. Let's do Thanks. one more before we take our first break here. Go ahead. All right. Keeping on the theme of young talents, Violin Road in our Discord says, if we add some, any of the college boys, Nazar Moore, et cetera, next season, how much closer will that take us to being competitive I know not all of them are ready to make the leap to the big leagues yet, but let's play pretend. Uh, so next season, if you have Frank Nazar, Ryan Green, I think Oliver Moore is going to play two years. Uh, Landon Slager, I think even the best version of him next season is probably playing in Rockford. Yeah, he's, uh, he's I don't think it guy. necessarily gets you any closer to competitiveness, but it but it makes the roster look more like, hey, these are the guys that are yeah. going to be here when we're competitive. Yeah. 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 It, yeah, it depends what your definition of competitive is. <laughs> well, I mean, look, we just told you it, how Jack Hughes' rookie year went. Yeah. <laughs> Don't expect Frank Nazar to come in here and score 50 points in his rookie year. Yeah, he might. It, it would be... Sure, that'd be great. <laughs> I don't think they'll be any more competitive, per se, but they'll definitely be more exciting and more promising. Like, there'll be more pieces there mm-hmm. that matter like even we've already had the discussion this year where we're like hey Connor Bedard is s- struggling with this line mate and this line mate and we're already like these guys aren't going to be here when this team is good next year more of the guys that are going to be here when the team is good are going to be here so you could start to and that's why really we're all ha- more- really have those discussions like is this guy really a center or wing right is this guy really good for but then, then you could really start breaking that down because these are the guys that hopefully are here for the long haul. And that's why we're all way more invested in this season than we were last. Right, yeah. yeah. All right, let's take our first break. Tell me about where I can get some dope kicks. Talking dope kicks? Well, then none other than Soul Savvy. You don't want to miss out on the biggest sneaker drops uh, around the world. So you want to download Soul Savvy's Drops app. The Drops by Soul Savvy app makes it easy to keep up with the latest news, releases, raffles, and sales in the sneaker world. It is your one-stop shop for everything sneakers. Uh, You got the drop alerts uh, that are instantly notified to you so you never miss a release ever again. You'll get instantly notified whenever your size is available to buy. Uh, they got the rap, the raffle management system keeps track of all the raffles that happen in the sneaker, uh, in sneakers with their raffle tracker, and they have the release calendar, which is Soul Savvy's accurate release calendar to keep you updated on releases that are coming up. Whether you're a casual buyer or an all-out sneakerhead, Soul Savvy has something for you with three different levels. You got the basic version, which is free, uh, the mobile plus, or the premium. How about that? Uh, and just for you, uh, lovely CHGO listeners, this Saturday, November 4th, uh, another reason to keep it on your calendar, the Air Jordan 1 Reimagined Royal drops. The drops by Soul Savvy uh, app will notify you when and where it is dropping. 
So download the app and never miss a release. Sign up for Soul Savvy by clicking in the, the links in the description below, or you can visit links.soulsavvy.com slash chgo, or head over to the App Store and download The Drops by Soul Savvy app. You don't want to miss out on those Air Jordan 1 reimagined Royals. That sounds cool. Yeah. I had the Air Jordan 1's Royals, and I said, these don't fit me very well, and I threw them away as a youth. <laughs> I always Good think move. to myself, it'd be it'd be cool to have a pair of Jordans. And then I look at the price tag, and I'm like, hmm, I yes. don't know if I'm that cool. I also look at myself in the mirror and say, if I put these on, Jordans are immediately uncool. <laughs> like, I would be the guy that kills Jordans. Cool. Well, that I guy's not going to actually afford to buy a pair of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. right, yeah. Tank the Tell market. me when there's a New Balance drop. <laughs> yeah. with, well, with good, with good art support. I'm, I'm, I'm say, sure. When's the art support drop? <laughs> I'm sure Soul Savvy will uh, will alert you. Let me know when there's picks. some sketcher slip on yeah, art support. Yeah, Doctor Shoals Royals. <laughs> they got you covered. <laughs> All right, those will be uh, dropping. Hey, you want some bacon drops in your life? Yes, every day. Charlie the Bacon Guy oh, is your mom, guy for drops? the best craft oh. bacon in the world. He is based out of Woodridge, Illinois. Makes craft bacon and bacon jams in over thirty different flavors the bacon and bacon jams they're naturally cured fancy preservative free product there aren't any ingredients that charlie can't pronounce himself uh it's awesome it is natural it is delicious all he does is gets a variety of spices get some bacon mix it all together boom you got all kinds of great flavors like maple pepper mm -hmm. jalapeno garlic old bay which we just tried it was awesome rosemary and the malort which i'm going to pass on but charlie says don't knock it until you try it and the bacon jams, the original, the bourbon, the spicy. There's all sorts of different flavors dropping all the time. I say this all the time on my other podcast, the I'm Fat Podcast. It is the holidays approach, and you're looking for a unique gift to give. Order a couple pounds of some different bacons. Give them to the people in your life. You know, Maybe you buy a cooler, wrap it up, put the bacon in there. It freezes up beautifully, so you can keep it in your freezer for a while. It makes a really great gift. My wife and I have done it for a couple years in a row, and every time we do it, we win the holidays. You should give it a try, too. Bacon jam goes perfectly on anything, too. Scrambled mm -hmm. eggs, toast, crackers, burgers, grilled cheese, cinnamon rolls, yes. or just eat it with a spoon. Yep. He'll deliver to you, meet you halfway, or even ship it. He makes the bacon so you can bring it home. Here's how to order. Hit him up on Instagram at Charlie the Bacon Guy. Check out the merch there as well. Email charliethebaconguy at gmail.com, and he's on Twitter at CZ the Bacon Guy. I know his website is coming soon as well. Get yourself some bacon from Charlie the Bacon Guy. We had a uh, Charlie the Bacon Guy weekend last weekend since there yes, were no we hockey games. Uh, Saturday night, we did the grilled cheese sandwiches with the spicy bacon jam mm. in the grill, like spread it on the inside of the bread with cheese and grill it up. Fantastic. Some nice hero bread. Sunday, we made, uh, we made uh, lamb burgers Ooh. with feta cheese. Mm. And then with tzatziki sauce and the shawarma bacon. Oh, yeah. Oh. And it was amazing. Just that is amazing. just a Greek that treat. Good. It was very, very good. Yeah, but your house smelled amazing that night. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Until about 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. And not so much. But it was good for it, it was good while it lasted. All right. Uh, what do we got? Some more uh, from the Discord? Okay, All right. A lot. Uh, Sports Gal Ali says, Kershev needs to oh, just give uh, him Andreas Athanasiu. Athanasiu is useless on the fourth line. Kershev needs to stay with Bedard. You're Luke Richardson. How would you construct the lines with the healthy players at the moment? Um, I don't have a huge issue with what he did yesterday, to be honest. Um, I think if you're going to play Athanasiu, he's got to be in the top six. He's not going to provide you much on the bottom. Is he ideal? Uh, yeah, uh, let, me, let me fix that. I would say top nine. He's yes. useless on the fourth line. That's true. Top six now when Taylor Hall comes back, drop him to the third line. Yeah, but you've got to find a way to get something out of him. He's here for two years. He's paid well. Uh, he has proven that while a, certainly an imperfect player, he has the ability to produce and create. As of yesterday's practice, the Tennessee was centering Reichel and Radish. He had success centering Reichel before, so hopefully this gets him going. Hopefully it takes some of the pressure off Reichel from playing center to get some points on the board. I like Felino with Bedard and Kurashev. That's that line looks really good. Johnson, Dickinson, Donato, fine. Uh, and then Kachuk and Whistle and Perry's your fourth line. I like Kachuk in there because he's been good on the penalty kill and good overall, which is a surprise, I think, to all of us. But yeah. I, I got no issues with the way the forward lines are set up right now. Yeah, I I I don't think there's a a change that I that I would feel strong enough to be like, no, this has to happen this way. 
I think if Anna see you at center on the second line, you put Reichel at wing. I think that's the biggest thing in yep. the forwards group that I was – that if I were coaching, I would make that change, and it, it happens. So I think they're they're fine as is, and I think the bottom six, any kind of combination you throw together, I mean, I don't think it's going to make all that big of a difference. And Nick Felino playing on the top line with – Bedard and Kurashev, that'll eventually change when Taylor Hall comes back. But I would like to see Bedard and Kurashev stick together because they've worked together so far in the, in the time that they play together. So if the health of Hall, when he comes back, you have Hall, Bedard, Kurashev on the top, you throw Felino back with Dickinson and Perry, uh, then I think you have a question between what do you do with Tyler Johnson, Ryan Donato, and Whistle and Kachuk because – you can only play, you know, three of them, and it'd be weird. But like Ryan Donato, kind of, where does he go? Like does, he's not like a fourth line guy, but it's kind of becoming like, what's what's his spot? If that third line is Felino, Dickinson, Perry at full health, he's only kind of he's kind of going to get stuck in the fourth line. And if you move Radish down, well, he's not a fourth line player either. And you also have Blackwell coming back eventually, and Hall coming back. Yeah, and it's like uh. it's, it gets it, it gets a little weird. Yeah, it gets a little weird. Spe- and if a fan see you and Reichel work in the center wing positions that they've kind of flip flopped now, the 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 I know we talked a lot about like oh we have there's a lot of flexibility for Richardson to, to work with and there is but also once you kind of solidify these spots there's going to be some awkward like a guy who should be playing third or second line playing fourth line and. It's a different role that they'll have to play. Yeah, I I like Donato on the bottom six though. He's been much more effective playing third or fourth line, however yeah. you want to call. It. I mean, I like to go top six, bottom six, as opposed to like one, two, three, four, because third and fourth lines are kind of interchangeable. I mean, when you had Felino, yeah. Dickinson, and Perry, that is a third line that plays like a fourth line, right? Yeah, so. You know, even if it, but Donato's been pretty good since getting off that top yeah. line. I think he was a little too much for him there. Um, nice yeah. idea, but it, he was overwhelmed, and I, I, he's better fit suited for that bottom six energy, grindy kind of line. And he's been pretty good. I mean, he had the goal the other night, and you know, he's been around the net. Mm-hmm. So I, I like him back on that bottom six role. I mean, it's. <clears throat> Well, I know we're going to get more into Reichel and, and Bedard here in a minute, so let's uh, hold off on that. <laughs> yeah. That thought. Yeah. All right, before we get to Reichel and Bedard, this one from Alan K in the Discord. I haven't seen him in the chat yet today, but he's here every day. What the this, hell, Alan? Come on, Alan. This season, I've noticed the NHL app not being updated with <laughs> team specific content oh, like post game interviews. Teams, especially the that Hawks, have separate team specific apps that are pushing hard and getting more content. Why all these changes? Is there awareness that the Hawks and at an NHL. Uh, was awareness that Hawks and at the NHL the digital fan experience has taken a hit this year? Why are Hawks slow to add content to their own YouTube channel? Thanks for all you do. I wish I could really. It's answer a good those. question. <laughs> I'm not in charge of app creation, but whoever is uh, for the NHL, um, I wouldn't put it on your resume. That no, app, it's horrible. That app is so not so unfriendly it, to the user. You do it like right before the season begins. You've got a million pages that are on Google that are now bad gateways because they've changed everything. Do that in July yes. and then figure it out before the season begins. It's horrible. I can't access uh, the event report or the game summary on Google Chrome. Oh, no one uses Google Chrome. I don't know. That's that's on I don't, you because yeah. mine works. I, I, it's weird. I don't. I can't figure I that know. out. But like, it's the only website that doesn't work for me on Google Chrome. Yeah, I've I've started use. I've started going to the ESPN app to get NHL stuff. Which I, I never thought I'd the, do. I don't look at the NHL app except for scores. I do have to admit the NHL website in game thing is better than it was because you don't have all them little frames and different. Yeah, true. Oh, that the in game like it, game it center better. or whatever it's called. Yeah, the game center page is better. The app sucks. App's terrible because you go on the app to look at the scores and you like you check it and then ten minutes later you go back and it's the same where it was. Like it doesn't automatically uh, refresh, refresh. In, yeah. in real time. You have to like pull down twice. To get it to refresh, that's so annoying. An app now in this day and age, if you're watching a checking on a game that is happening, you should be watching the tick time tick in real time. Yeah, yeah. Like every other sport can do that. 
I, it's, I don't know. Well, what was wrong with it last year? I, it was I fine. Mean, it wasn't great, but it worked. It wasn't great, but it wasn't it was this. Better than it is. Function. Yeah. 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 That's usually the key the, the app, feature. I have been on the app so little this yeah. year. And usually I'm on the app all the time, mm-hmm. at least with the old one. While, as I said, the actual game center on NHL.com is better. Because I use that. Obviously, we use that a lot being you know in the press box and watching the games. That's better. But the app is like, it's... It's bad, really like, bad. It's, I'm just it's I'm using it, I'm using it bad. now, and I'm like, if I wanted to, <laughs> if I wanted to see the schedule for the Blackhawks, I have to go to Team Blackhawks, and it takes me to a completely different different app. Yeah, it takes you to the Blackhawks app. Uh, what are you, like? Why are you here? You're just making the experience. <laughs> You're more in difficult. the way. Is the Nikita Zaitsev playing defense of apps? I have a question from sure. Steve from Cicero. Uh, I forgot to send it in. <laughs> so as we watch Nikita Zaitsev, it feels like he is like not even considered. Like even during practice, it's like him and everybody else. It just it's weird. There's like a weird vibe about him. I don't know if it's a language barrier thing. Would or... you rather be hated or completely irrelevant? I mean, would you rather people say this guy sucks? I hate him. Or would you rather be like, who's that? Who's that I guy? Think, as I long mean, as it comes with that four point five million I guess, dollar yeah, paycheck, yeah, I don't right? care. I mean, it, he's cashing checks no matter what. But yeah, I mean, as as NHL players, they want to play. That, that's that's the biggest thing uh, to 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 these guys. But you know, I just like I said, like I like I said before, like when Vlasic went down, they brought up Phillips and put him right into the lineup. It wasn't even like, oh, Phillips is here. Yeah. We're going to rotate, you know, Tenorti, Zaitsev, Phillips. We'll see what the be- – no, he went right yeah, in the it lineup. Was like he played like Friday, leap, Saturday, leap flew frog. out to Arizona Sunday, was in the game Monday. Yeah. I just – to me, it just seems like uh, Zaitsev is, is is not going to factor to for this team unless there's, un- you know, knock on wood, a slew of defensive injuries. Yeah. Uh, people saying uh, Evil Bills says, why don't they not buy him out already? He's just taking up a roster spot for a young guy. You can only he's buy actually, out. He's actually not taking up a spot, though. Like He's, no, he's not playing. Sitting. He's a seventh defenseman. Yeah. yeah. You don't want Isaac Phillips up here as your seventh defenseman. That does no one any good. No. So wherever, the if it, be it Kaiser, be it Phillips, whoever, that player has to be playing, mm-hmm. which is why when they call Phillips up, he's not just there to hold a roster spot. He's right. going to play. They don't care about Zaitsev. After this year, he's gone. They're not going to resign him. If they get to a position where they have to buy him out, maybe they will. But why? Just this point. Why? There's got nothing yeah. but cap space. Just yeah. let him. There's there's no need to buy him out unless he gets to a point where he's just like, I don't want to sit here and do nothing with my life. Like, I want to go play for another team. Then or, you trade him for future considerations. You have to deal, or you just terminate the contract. Yeah, which you can do. And he's free to go wherever he wants. Yeah, that has to be a two way right deal. I, this, yeah. Uh, right, yeah. That's the the the, the, buyout, buy, the buyout, and that only that there's only there's what two window two that. windows to yeah. do that, and they're both in the off season. I think yes. One, yeah, I know one is for sure in off season. You can't no no. Um, no. But if he wanted to, if he wanted to explore other opportunities, you could you could terminate the contract, and he's free to go wherever he wants. But does he want to walk away from a $4.5 million contract? I wouldn't. Because whoever signs well, him is going to sign into a minimum deal. Yeah, but okay. But let's, he gets to play. But let's just say, like, like I, I know he's Russian. Let's just say, for instance, he gets an offer to pl- be like, hey, you can go play for a team in the KHL for the same money and, you know, get go get to play, or do you get to sit for do nothing but get to make the same money? Like, sure, I would like to sit and make $4 million rather than work and make $4 million. But that's the different mentality of a professional athlete. They want to play the game right. they want to play that they've because played their entire he life. He wants to continue to make $4 million after this contract exactly. is over with, right. which is not hap- going to happen if he never plays this year. Right, yeah. It's a weird spot. Uh, but if I do have to say one nice thing about Nikita Zaitsev, it's he's got really cool tattoos. I'll give him that. 22 got, is a good number, too. He's got cool tattoos. He's got like a puzzle, jigsaw puzzle kind of tattoo going up that's his cool. arm. Interesting. Remember yeah. when I asked Adam Boquist about his his sleeve? He's like, I don't know. I just thought it looks cool. There's like no significance <laughs> to his tattoos. Like he just did it. That's why I don't have a tattoo. There's a lot of no. There's no significance in Adam Boquist. They're kind of like go hand in hand these <laughs> oh, days. Oh man, come on. Uh, Low hanging fruit. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's rifle through some here because I know we're getting long. How about a fun one here from AJ? Oh, it's time. baseball kid. Describe the current state of the Blackhawks with a song. That's Youth gone question. wild by Skidrow. 
Wow. Uh, mm. I'll I'll pick "Teenagers" by My Chemical Romance. All right. If you know the lyrics to that song, That's you know how it, it fits. Uh, just based on the title of the song, I'm gonna go with uh, former Blackhawks defenseman Jack Johnson, sitting, waiting, wishing. Because I'm sitting, waiting, wishing for this Good team to be competitive. I was about to say, if you pick a Creed song, I'm throwing this water. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've had enough spills on this set lately. Yes. This wouldn't have been a th- spill. It would have been an a, a, a on-purpose throw. I mean, you can make a case. Carm yesterday was a throw, but yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, is there spills. is there a conspiracy that that was on purpose? I just made one. Let's yeah. just make it up. Yeah. yeah. I think Carm did that on purpose. Totally. Carm did it on purpose. Go, go watch the video on Twitter. Yeah, I saw the video. There, was, there, was an ex- there was an extension of the hand. Yeah. It wasn't to grab; it was to f- toss. There, there was definitely the water. a side eye mm-hmm. getting his target. You lined it up. It, yep. yep. Hey, I when you cover it. a team that dysfunctional, there's going to be some tension. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> all right, guys, from Charlie the Bacon guy, hey, first of many Reichel Discord, questions. Wow. I'll, I'll pop Love all of them on screen, but we're going to answer this one. Um, I understand continuity for players, but why not take chances by putting 27 and 98 together? I like the idea of trying 27 up with 98 while Hall is out, like you suggested, but I get paid to do food things, not create lineups. <laughs> well, I think the the reason that they're not doing it is because they want, they, in their mind, they want scoring depth. And their two biggest scoring yeah. threats, to, despite number 27 having exactly zero points, um, they feel that he is the second best option to produce for them. Yeah. So they want to spread out the scoring. Now, we saw it at the end of the Arizona game a little bit. And I think if you get to the point in the game late in the third, down a goal or two, I think you will see that break glass in case of emergency situation. Um, and it's the same deal with the power play. Like, that's why we're seeing Reichel and Korchinski on power play two. But my thing with that is on the ice. power play one's on the ice for 158 of the two minutes. Right, right, yeah. Like, why not just load it the hell up and see what happens? Yeah, I don't know. I, I I see what they're doing, but I would like to see if if this continues for Reichel, if we're getting to 12, 13 games and he's got zero points or one point, you got to try something to get him going again. Mm-hmm. You yeah. got to try something. Yeah, the the main reason. Well, there's two reasons I think he's they got him to wing, but not with Bedard. First is what you just said. They they want to see if they can get him going separate separately from Bedard. Yeah. So you have two lines that can score instead of just one. And what has Philip Kershev or Nick Felino done in those two games to get demoted from that line? Nothing. Nothing. That They've line's been good. been good. Yeah. You roll with what's good and hope you can get something together. Mm-hmm. If that line drops off this game, say that, you know, against the Panthers, they just get completely run out of the building, and they're a minus three. Okay, then you put Bedard or you put Reichel and Bedard together for the Devils game. Mm-hmm. Sure, um, but you, I think they wanted they they're desperately trying to get Reichel going away from Bedard. And I know we had some questions like, when do you send him back to Rockford? You Never. Don't. You don't. No. C- they, oh, is it hurting his confidence? The way he's playing, you know what's going to hurt his confidence even more? Going back to Rockford. Yeah, that's from AJ, by the way. Yeah, that yeah. no, that's not an option. And outside of the points, and I know this is going to sound stupid to say because points are kind of the most important thing, he's not played terribly. He's no. not been a liability out there. He's played well no. defensively. The faceoffs are getting better, but he wasn't drafted to be a defensive. He wasn't drafted to be Marcus Kruger. No, you don't right. draft him. Right. He was drafted to be a dynamic offensive yeah. player, which he still is. He just needs that first one. When he gets that first one, Things are going to settle in, and we'll see that guy that we saw last year. So hopefully, you know, getting on the wing and thinking less and being more instinctual, that's going to be the best thing for him. Yeah, and you can kind of make – you can sort of make the comparison for the idea of putting those two together to when Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane started their careers, and they played together a lot. But you also look at the lineup for most of those teams that they played with, there were guys behind them that could fill in those roles yeah. and be like, oh, okay, this is this is a guy who is a second-line scorer. This is a guy who's yeah. a third-line producer. You had Patrick Sharp and, yeah. and Christopher Steve. This, Steen this team doesn't there. have that. So right. when you do stack up your best offensive options on one line, like a like a Reichel, Bedard, Kurashev line, everything behind it, for a team that is lacking offensive production, you're not going to get much more out of it if three of your four lines can't really do anything offensively. So... I think there's there's definitely merit to keeping them separated enough. And if Reichel can get going on his own, that's going to be more confident than yeah. 
that's going to be a bigger confidence booster because it's likely he's going to be driving that rather than while well, anybody playing with Bedard is going to produce. Like, okay. I think the goal is ultimately to get that Kershev, Reichel, Athanasiu line back together. Yeah, they haven't had an opportunity to, right. to do it uh, consistently. Maybe, if Hall comes back here in the next couple of games, maybe that's when you put that line together and see right. if it has the same effect as it did end of last season and then training camp. All right, let's hit a super chat before we take another break. Uh, this from Thomas says, I love the direction this team is going. There will be growing pains, ugh, but I think the main pieces are showing signs of growth, even Kaiser. Yeah, I think that's kind of where we're all at, right? Like, it's it hasn't gone quite as ideally as maybe we imagined coming into the year. Like, we thought Reichel would be putting up more points, and we thought Taylor Hall would be healthy, and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But for the most part, as we watch these young guys play, they've all been pretty, pretty solid. So, yeah, it's it, it, certainly optimism uh, remains. Absolutely. Hey, uh, you know what's optimistic and fun? The month of November, and we're in the month of November. Sure. Yeah. Thanksgiving's coming. Yeah, it's only, we get, exactly. Best day of the year, baby. Yes, the forgotten middle child of late year holidays. Not forgotten by me. <laughs> Not by, forgotten by me either. That guy Christmas. Another big portion of November is the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Mm. And it's Black Friday savings time at Ray Chevrolet and Fox Lake. Why wait to Black Friday? Let's do it all month long. Okay. As one of the top-selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest... Chevy inventories and all month long you can save big at Ray Chevy during their Black Friday sales event where you can choose from over 100 Silverados in stock the perfect tailgate vehicle and that's not all get 0% financing with $0 down and zero payments until 2024 that's all the freaking zeros <laughs> and I know everyone loves the word free and that's what you'll yeah. get this month at Ray Chevrolet and Fox Lake a free oil change all hey. you need to do is mention CHGO and scheduling your oil change that's it and then they pick up the tab. It's Black Friday offer you don't want to miss. But you have to schedule it by November 30th. So you have to the end of the month to get that free oil change. Buy with confidence with the Ray Price Promise. It's a guarantee that the price you see online is the price you pay when you walk into the dealership. In many cases, other dealers will raise the price on you when you come into the dealership saying things like, are you a recent college graduate? Nope. Are you active in the military? Nope. Are you a farmer? Nope. Are you a center or a wing? And in most cases, the answer will be no. And that's when the other dealers will raise the price on you, saying the price online included limited rebates that you don't qualify. Well, at Ray, that's not the case because Ray is not jerks like those other dealers. The yeah. price you see online is the price you're going to pay with no add-ons or no jerky hidden fees ever. In fact, Ray will do everything possible to find even more additional savings for you, which make the price even lower than what you saw online. That's cool, and that free oil change. Mm -hmm. Visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com and get your Black Friday savings. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. And I apologize for some of the people early in the chat were hoping it was a Ram read today. No, we yeah, got the Chevy. Yeah. That's Stay right. tuned. There's you're more Ram coming. Or Ram you later. You're gonna wanna, <laughs> you're gonna wanna uh, act on that uh, Black Friday deal early because you'll be busy on Black Friday because Toronto is here in town yes. playing the Blackhawks this for a 1 p.m. start on Black Friday. So be a good one. you're gonna be busy watching hockey, digesting your uh, Thanksgiving kind of a fun day to wear black jerseys, leftovers. It? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it would be. Someday. Someday, when I'm awfully low. Uh, anyways, uh, Goose Island beer. It's delicious. It's nutritious. It is available to you in the Chicagoland area. They are the... I've had coffee today. Uh, they are <laughs> the proud beer sponsor of us here at CHGO, and they have been Chicago's beer since 1988, and they have a tremendous year-round beer roster for you to choose from, choose from and enjoy. They got the full pocket pills, the everyday beer the Goose Island beer brewers are drinking. You have the uh, entire family of beer hug ipas uh, just not the one that herb spilled yesterday mm. <laughs> and you have the three one twos the wheat ale the golden cans unmistakable uh in the year-round lineup for goose island and uh to celebrate two of the sports teams here in chicago goose island has the bull and goose west side ale celebrating the chicago bulls and of course the blackhawks pale ale available to you and as it is uh almost christmas time for some people or me's. Uh, you have the Christmas IPA from Goose. That is going to be hitting the shelves very soon, so keep your eye out for that. You can get all of these ultra-fresh 
brewery exclusive beers and more when you go to goose islands original brew house on Clybourne avenue in lincoln park or you can go to their tap room on fulton street in west town again that is the goose island beer company chicago's beer good stuff all right let's get through some of these here i know we have a lot let's see if we can write start rifling through a rapid bit. fire all right this one from email from john I'm not going to try your last John, name, John. And John. this is kind of old, by the way. John I just Nomides. I just found it today. Okay. Hey, guys. Massive fan <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> I just realized It's been that. a while since we've done it. It is literally a month old. Check it's the been a while. Man. Wow. Yeah, check your emails. <laughs> hey, guys. Massive <laughs> fan of the podcast. Funny. Just wanted uh, to get your take on the backlash that the NHL is getting for posting the Bedard dangle versus the Wings. Summer the preseason s- highlight. Yes. This is very okay. old, Jay. Summer <laughs> saying there's no reason to post it since he didn't score. I'm in the camp of at least they're attempting to actually market a player. Just wanted to get your thoughts on the backlash. Well, so I think we can summarize this very easily. Just I know it's an old example, but it remains. Anytime they post anything about Bedard, there is backlash. There are 31 fan bases that are pissed that Connor Bedard is not on their team, Mm -hmm. and they're going to bitch and whine about it for the foreseeable future. Cry me an effing river. Cope. Deal. Shut the hell up. The league is going to promote one of its most exciting young players. Yeah. you. I mean, you're going to see exciting plays from him for his entire career. Like, are you going to be mad every time they post it? People are still mad about LeBron James highlights. People are just idiots. Hey, People love to be outraged about stuff. So, so yeah. if Connor Bedard's next LeBron James, great. Yeah. If he's oh. LeBron James of hockey, cool. We're at worst, the fourth best player of all time. I'll take it. That would be nice. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, no. People, NHL f- fan base tears make delicious coffee in the morning. So really does. Crying. Yep. Nice. All right, this one from Juan. Nine games in, how would you grade Bedard's play so far? B plus. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, B or B plus. Been he's pretty been much good. as advertised. He's been pretty good. He's been good. There's some things that you're like, eh, you could do that a little bit better, but he's going to. Like, it's nine games from an 18-year-old kid uh, with, you know, questionable talent around him. Yeah, and so. and for me, it's it's not even that, like, he needs to do a ton of things better. I just think there's things he's just going to learn at the NHL level and will eventually adapt to. Yeah, and A would be point per game. A, so, like, yeah. holy shit, this kid's already one of the best players in the league. Yeah. Which was not out of the realm of possibility coming into the year. But there have been some growing pains. But, I mean, other than that, he is, has he been the best Blackhawk consistently? Yes. Yeah. Is he their biggest threat to score all the time? Mm-hmm. Yes. Is he a threat to score every time he's on the ice? Yes. Yeah. So, better at face-offs. I would like to see him shoot a little more, which Luke Richardson has said, too. Um, but aside from that, yeah. yeah. His response every time someone asks him like, about shooting, about shooting is, is he goes to that, well, I don't consider myself just a shooter. Okay, but sometimes you can. It's yeah, okay. It's okay, to do it's okay it. if you want to. Right. Yeah. We ain't going to be mad at you. Yes, exactly. All right, let's do another one. All right, another one from Juan here. Uh, he says, how high do you think the organization is on Vlasic? I think they love him pretty high. I mean, he has been, I, I mean, as much as we watch him and love him, think about how much they are seeing, you know, watching the video. They moved him up to the top pair. He's, he has, everything they dreamed he would be when drafted, they didn't draft him for the record, but everything they dreamed Vlasic? he would be. Yeah, wasn't he a Bowman pick? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They, oh, I didn't say the first name. Yes, I was talking about Scotty. Sense. Scotty. Uh, yeah, um, that was specifically. <laughs> 50, 50, yes, the previous cent. previous front office did not pick him, but yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but it was kind did. of a, hey, if this guy, if this guy, you know, develops, he could be really great. I think he has developed as good or better than they had hoped. I think he's right Faster on track too. Yeah, I think he's right on track. I mean, three years of college, and then you play a a, a year of, you know, minor. AHL hockey, and then you're an NH, you know, you become an NHL regular. Like, that's a perfect track, right? Yeah, but I yeah. mean, to be, to, to be, be a top f- pair guy, yeah, top pair, and quick. like, not only, I mean, yes, he is a top pair on this team, sure, right. but he's also holding his own as a top pair guy, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, he's not, he's not struggling at all, so yeah. yeah, he's been really, really good. Of course, he's on the Avalanche, you, you third pair, or whatever, but still, I he mean, might be he's in the wherever the Colorado you he's very play. good. Super chat here from uh, Young Dangle God. Kyle Davidson grade F because he hasn't signed Kaner yet. And, of course, he thank chips you for in your dollar. his dollar. You gave us one yesterday, too. We forgot to get to it, but thank you. Staying on brand. That's tough. That's tough yeah. on Davidson. 
All right. Next one from Old Sneaky Pete. Tomorrow Ooh, the United Center the collapses, and the Hawks have to build a new arena anywhere in the metro area. Oh, no one was hurt. Where would you like to see the new stadium built? Mokina for you two guys? <laughs> Absolutely not. Homewood, Illinois. Uh, I would not move it at all. I, I think you, it's in a I perfect you a location. punch in the back of the head, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> I think you see it in a, in a perfect rebuild, spot. Just rebuild it right where it is. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't move it at all. I think it's convenient for everybody. It's right in the middle of the city. It's where the space is. Uh, all the highways through. are right there. There's more and more stuff being built up around it. Yeah. Uh, the neighborhood has improved around it <laughs> yeah, dramatically in think? the last 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and for selfish reasons, don't move it because it's literally right down the street. Yeah. It makes life easy for us. What's <laughs> that? Let's put All right. Let's what we can just put, for the you sake can't of the question. You can put it on the same, somewhere else. On the same all right. Site. So I don't know exactly where this is. And I, I always thought that this is where the Sox should build their park. There's a If you go down Halstead. And it's north of Madison, so technically it's the north side, so maybe the, the Sox wouldn't dare do that. But there is a view off Halstead. There's a party store called Doolin's. You know what I'm talking about? On a, I can't, It's like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And you, would, bring up you are Earth. on Halstead, and you look east, and you have a perfect backdrop of the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Just a perfect backdrop of the city. The Sox should have built their ballpark right there facing the city. Well, wasn't they could guaranteed have done that rates where they are, too. supposed to be? Yeah, facing they the skyline, the but way. then they didn't do it that yeah. way. They want to face the uh, Robert Taylor homes instead. Yeah, uh, but you know it's the Sox; they do everything right all the time. But I, I think that area, just because of the view, would be a great place for a stadium. But I mean, it's a hockey arena, so why does it matter? So when he says metro area, it means within the city limits, right? I would think so. I guess, or like the you can't Chicago put it in, land can't area. put it in Arlington Heights. <laughs> I mean, like. The years ago, when they were developing Rosemont, there was a tunnel land right there that would have been great for any of the stadiums. Mm -hmm. Right there by the airport and, and right by the highways, easy to get to, public transportation, convenient. Uh, but inside the city, man, that's tough. I mean, there really isn't a lot of places you can go without not making a, not a lot else of big, leave. Yeah, there's not a lot of big um, open I mean, development in the could, city. <sighs> Tear down Grant Park. <laughs> yeah right. But that area sucks. Yeah, there's no. I mean, it's Soldier Field. Get rid of the bean and build Soldier the stadium Field there. Sucks. Uh, the the <laughs> Charter One, whatever it is, whatever bank sponsoring the con the concert yeah. amphitheater. I love that amphitheater, but it just getting there sucks. Sucks yeah, everything. Of, the, the the whole experience is terrible. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. I mean. You could tell the whites when the White Sox moved to Nashville. You could put it there. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that I mean, be because spicy. I mean, at least, oh, I got a dirty look from Vinny. I think he heard me say that. <laughs> uh, I thought that room was supposed to be us. soundproof. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the but, but, you know, getting to Sox Park is very easy. It well, is. I mean, yeah, no, it there's is. never any game day traffic, but still, <laughs> like game day lessons traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Chuckle Muckle, this is off topic. He brings up Joliet. Did you see which uh, celebrity just? Uh, Purchased the majority stake of the Joliet Slammers? No. Bill Murray. Hey. Oh, no kidding. It's not the first. Uh, he owns a few minor league. He has uh, St. Saint Paul Saints. No kidding. So he's uh, just he, like at a, least he used to. And I think he's got a piece of the Chicago Dogs, too. Nice. Look at this guy. I like that's, that. That's, just that's just likes his minor league the, baseball. Uh, that's why they put the Caddyshack restaurant right next to the Dogs Stadium. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Slammers now. games are fun, by the way. Downtown Joliet is cool when Too it's... Far. It is far, you're right. Too far. But it's cool. It's probably where our it's next e event yeah, will be. No. Very historic. Yeah. It's, it's even further than Mokina. Crimea River. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think that'd be a good location. Um, I would, I mean, selfishly, I'd love it to be as far north in the city <laughs> as possible. <laughs> Tear down Loyola High School, put it right there. Sure. Walk across the street to get yeah. it. Uh, no, I, I, I think... Uh, it would be logistically, it would be a nightmare, but I think having it in that along the lakeshore area, I think would be really cool. Um, just because I, I just think that area is really, really awesome uh, visually. But again, yeah, in indoor arena, who cares about visuals unless you put windows on the arena, which causes its own problems. But not great for hockey. Yeah, uh, but I think I, I think along the lakeshore would be awesome. All right, how many more we got? Uh, we have five. We don't more. have a show Ooh. tomorrow, so we right, can't really push right, them. Yeah, let's rifle, let's rifle through. Hey, right. I, I, but, ra rapid fire. Our, our, I thought this one was interesting. Our Tom show's Quinn. been pushed back, so we got a yes. few minutes. All right, it has been pushed back to four thirty. Appreciate Tom Quinn oh. making time yeah. for us. Tom Quinn Damn. says, with Ottawa losing their number then. one potentially next year, how does this affect a potential Tampa pick? Let's say Ottawa would have number ten and Tampa Bay number eleven. Is this pick now protected since Ottawa is forfeiting the pick and Tampa has number ten, That's or is Ottawa question. still slotted at ten? Well, 
I think what happened when the Coyotes lost their yeah, draft pick, it was a, it was an empty space yeah. for their pick. So it was still slot as 11th. Yeah, so I forget who was picked 12th. Was that um, Sillinger with the Blue Jackets? Was, that, was he the 12th pick? That would have been the Hawks pick, right? Yeah, that was the pick that they had if they would have not right. had Seth Jones, I think. But Cole anyway, Sillinger was number twelve. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah. So he's technically the twelfth. He was the eleventh pick of the draft, 12. but he is the twelfth. That yeah. would be great. No, I think that's how they'll do it. <laughs> right. I think that's how they would but would yeah. honor it. It's yeah. Way too early to start worrying about that Tampa pick falling top ten protected. I think it's not going to be top ten. Protected. I don't think so either because they're they're kind of holding their own. Yeah. They're 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 treading water. Uh, they're still a good team yes, outside and, of Andre and they have Andre Vasilevsky coming back in a month. Yeah. So like they they're still I'm not worried about that dropping. I mean, if the playoffs started today, they'd be the first wild card team. Yeah. It's not like no, they're in last place. They're yeah, not, I don't think we have to really I, worry I, about that. Yeah, and plus Ottawa can choose which pick they get. And if I'm is, if I'm Ottawa, why would you not take the 20 the option to take 2026 20, first round off the board? You right, have no idea where you're going to be in 2 years. Exactly. Um so I wouldn't really worry about that. I don't think the black the lightning are going to drop into the top ten. They're still a playoff team. They're a playoff team right now without Andre Vasilevsky. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. getting them back. You still have Nikita Kucherov, who's an MVP player. You still have Victor Hedman, who's a Norris type yeah. player. Braden Point. Brandon, yeah. You've got Steven Stamkos, maybe the most underrated superstar in the history of the NHL. You can make that argument. And he's on the team pitcher. And it's starting to come kind of clear that, well, he's in a contract year because it's certainly starting to come clear that Tampa probably doesn't want to sign him back unless he takes a major discount. Mm-hmm. So you got Steven Stamkos, one of the best players of this generation, playing with a chip on his shoulder. Either I want to prove Tampa is going to give me the money I deserve or I'm going to make them pay for let, make, letting me walk. Yep. And he wants to go get another big-time contract. Tampa Eight points st- in seven games for him. Tampa's sure. still making the playoffs. Yeah. Like, it, don't worry about the, that pick slipping to be like ninth or eighth. Yeah, it's just know. not happening. No. All right. All right, this Next. one from Bears and Hawks. With the elevated play in Blasik and, Kor- Blasik and Korchinski giving, up, uh, giving us three projected top four defensemen, should the Blackhawks change their draft strategy to best player available or stick to best defenseman with the first pick? They're in best player available mode. Yeah. yeah. No matter what. I don't if think- it's a defenseman... Wonderful. Yeah. If it's Macklin Celebrini, wonderful. Yeah. I think with because you have the second pick, you just take the best guy out there. Um, yeah, you do have... Oh, I second. I misunderstood the pick. question. Yeah. 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 Um, gotcha. But I don't think they've, like, officially stated that next year's first-round pick, our first first pick is going to be a defense. No. And we're targeting a defense. No, no. It's a good... Year four defense. You can never have too many either. You, this is a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, they're not done with Del Mastro and Allen and right. yeah. And no, Kaiser you got to keep. You, yeah, keep keep it coming. Um, I think but, it's also fair to say that between Phillips and Del Mastro and Allen, you might have one really good NHL. Or we don't know what any of those three are yet. You right, can't just go right, like, well, right. they they're off to a decent start in their pro career, so we're ready to just not draft defensemen anymore. Right, right. Yeah, no. keep it going. And you got to keep pressure on those guys, too. Yeah. You no. got to be like, hey, we really like you, and we think you're going to be part of the long-term future, but you see this kid coming up behind you? Mm-hmm. We kind of like him, too. So yep. competition. Yeah, keep, keep doing what you're doing. All right, two more guys. This one from Ryan Miller. Was last night just a bad night for Soderblom, or are the Coyotes that good? Finally, it was- Ryan Miller involved with the Blackhawks. <laughs> All these years, we finally got him. Um, it was not a great night for Soderblom, but was, he was hung out to dry it often. Was, it was some of column A, some of column B. A little yeah. bit of both. Yeah. yeah. The Hawks played bad and hung him out to dry And there were some just awful bounces that kept going the Coyotes' way. Yeah. And I think there are those games, too, where we've talked about this a few times since that game happened. Once a year, you've got a game that goes against you that way. One of the, once a year, you have a game that goes for you that way, mm-hmm. where every shot you take goes in. <laughs> you know, the Hawks will get one of those was down. There, It'll was even there a out. game last year where they had like like five goals on like sixteen shots, and like won the game, like like won a stupid game, like five to one or something like that. That sounds sure. familiar. I feel like was that happened that at least Jose once game early in the year. Might have been. I mean, well, I always remember that everything goes wrong game was that Seattle game at the yes. United Center where it's just like 
You it looked up and all of a sudden it was a it was, comedy of yeah. You errors. looked up and all of a sudden it's four nothing and you're yeah. like, what the hell just happened? Mm-hmm. It, it happens. Every team has one or two of those games a year. Good to get them out of the way early. Yeah, I, I want to so. say it was seven goals on twenty two shot attempts, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was it was bad. it was like every time they even put the puck near the net, it it got it in going there in. somehow. Yeah. All right, last one here from Jeff Maroon. After nine games last year, the Hawks were four three and two. Do you still think they eclipsed last year's point total? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm still an eternal optimist, so yes. I still think 70 points is reachable. Yeah, I mean, the, the way this season schedule has started has been absolutely brutal. Yeah. I saw Daily Faceoff today posted the remaining strength of schedule for the season. The Hawks have the second easiest schedule the rest of the way. they've played all the good teams they, already. Yeah, they've already knocked out a lot of their... You know who has easiest? The fraudulent Boston Bruins. Oh, of course wonderful. they do. They have the easiest schedule the rest of the year. I, and I think, of course, that changes. if I'm not wrong, this is based on this year currently. Right. So, like, those games against the Edmonton Oilers are going to look a lot tougher. Yeah, and now. Carolina yeah. and those teams that are off to starts that yeah. are unexpected. It's going to fluctuate. But, yes, the schedule gets easier. Not as many Stanley Cup contenders and winners on the schedule and going 17% on. 17% of Seven, their road schedule is, is already gone already. Yeah, like, yeah. the month of February, you have one road game. Yeah. So... I think, like, it, it, 70 points is still a very realistic target. And you, you've dealt with a lot of injuries this year so yeah. far. Taylor Hall hasn't played a lot of games. You missed Kershev for the first handful of games. Now you got Vlasic out. Like, it's been a rough start, and they're still outside of two, you know, outside of one game, they've been in every game. Right. First nine games last year at Colorado, at Vegas, at San Jose to start. Then you got four at home. It was Detroit, Seattle, Florida, Edmonton. Then you were at Buffalo, and then you were home against middle Minnesota. So some still some good teams that yeah, were in there last year. A lot of more middle ground there, though. Yeah, too. it wasn't got, back to back. Detroit, to back. Seattle, it wasn't Florida, un- four Minnesota. Four undefeated teams in a row. Yeah, right. right. I mean, it's the NHL. Two out of your three, every three games are going to be against good teams. Yeah, like, right. usually. So, yeah, but this was a ridiculous start to the season. So, uh, this will still be an improved record over last year just because the team is better. Yeah. We haven't. I think top top to bottom it is. Yeah. Of course it is. And we just, we just haven't seen it yet. They haven't gelled because of injuries, because of tough opponents. They're going to get their act together. You're, we're going to find the right combinations that start to work. Mm-hmm. The power play is eventually going to start scoring goals. Lucas Reichel is eventually going to start putting up points like we know he can. Like it's a, it's we've played, we still got almost ninety percent of the season to go. Yeah, long way for things to right, you know, the ship to right. And it's like you said, like it, the start has gone as tough as you can imagine with the injuries and the lack of scoring from Reichel. It's going to get better. So yeah, I think seventy is certainly attainable. I think if you looked at the first nine games of the season and you said, how many wins do you think the Blackhawks have? I would have probably predicted two. Right. And they have three. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's not so bad. It's not against Fair the teams enough. you expect. No, I would have predicted against Montreal and Arizona. Right, yeah. Not Toronto and Vegas. Right, yeah. And Pittsburgh. All right, uh, before we wrap up, we want to tell you about our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. Who are the pretenders? Who are the contenders? The Bears. We're more than halfway through the NFL season, but DraftKings Sportsbook is still pumping out unbeatable offers every single game. New customers can bet just 5 bucks on anything to get $200 instantly in bonus bets, and DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of a sweetener offer every game day this October. Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the app now and use code CHGO. New customers can bet just $5 on anything to get $200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code CHGO. The crown is yours. Jump on the Bears. They've got some bad quarterbacks coming up. I'm predicting a 500 streak. For for them or or who they're playing? Yes. Oh, okay. (laughs) Gambling problem. (laughs) Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 
Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, licensee partner Golden Nugget, Lake Charles, Louisiana, 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. All right. That's going to do it. We're back tomorrow. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're off tomorrow. We're back Saturday for our with takeover our takeover. Event. Yeah. Hawks yes. and Panthers. If you've not gotten information about the event yet, it's coming. We are wait the all city is waiting for the Hawks to send the tickets and then we'll send one email with all the information. I believe they have the tickets to the game. They're waiting on the passes for the fifth third experience. Mm-hmm. And they're waiting to get them all so you get them all in one shot and there's less confusion. Yeah. Yes. And we will say that everything starts around three o'clock at the barn. At the barn on on hockey bar on Ogden. Just be at the barn at three and, and we'll take it from there. Yeah. We'll be good to go from there. We'll That's do it. a little happy hour and then we'll head over to fifth third eventually and have some fifth fun. Fifth third is four thirty to six thirty. And then we'll go to the game and have some more fun. Exactly right. So we'll see you then. Can't wait to see you at the UC on and Saturday. Post game on Saturday will be delayed. Yeah. We're all gonna come back after the game. Uh Greg included, who will be in the coverage role. And uh we will we'll all three of us will be here for post game. So look for it, you know, twenty, twenty five minutes after the final horn, I yep. would say. All right, we'll talk to you then. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all the great mailbag questions. Thanks to Steven for running the show. We'll talk to you Saturday on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. We all silly like the mayor. 